Hello and welcome to this second video on ratio and proportion. In our first video, we discussed the basic concepts of ratios and proportion. In this video, we'll discuss a few applications of ratio. So we'll learn in this video the concept of partnership. We'll learn how to compare different ratios. We will also solve a few important questions that come from this chapter in the aptitude exams. So let's get started. The first concept here is the concept of partnership. Now, as the name suggests, partners. So if let's say we start a business and there are two friends, right, A and B, who have started this business, these both are invested in the business in terms of two things. One, it could be the capital that they have invested. Second, it could be the time for which they have invested in, right? So for example, let's say A starts a business and uh, he was there for the entire year, uh, whereas he invested, let's say, certain amount of money. While B came in the middle of the year, but invested, let's say, four times the uh, capital. So the question is, how should the distribution of profits, you know, happen? So the ratio as a concept is very important and can tell us how the profits, you know, should be distributed. So the formula for that is very, very simple. The profits can be distributed in terms of the capital and time that means for a if let's say a has put in ca which is let's say the capital invested by a into the time invested by a and for b also same thing c b or it could be the time invested by b in the business so that means by this simple formula we can calculate how the profit should be shared so let's take an example wherein uh, a had put in let's say one lakh rupee and he was there for the entire 12 months right for let's say one year whereas b invested three lakh rupees but was only there six months so the question is how if let's say they made make a profit of let's say one lakh rupee at the end of the here so the question is how should the profits be divided so it should be 1 into 12 is to 3 into 6 so this is 12 is to 18 or this should be 2 is to 3 that means if there is 1 lakh profit this should be 2 is to 3 that means 2 upon 1 lakh into 2 upon 5 into 1 lakh right that means this will come to how much 2 upon 5, 5 is total, right? So this would come to your 40,000 and this should come to your 60,000, right? This should be oral. So this is how they should divide the profit. So this is the simple concept of partnership. That means the ratio of profits should be in a way that the product of the capital and time. So in that ratio, they can divide the profits. There could be two, there could be three, there could be more number of people. So let's also attempt a sample question. So let's say in this they have given ABC are partners in the same company and share profits in the ratio of 3 is to 5 is to 12. If A invested 50,000 for 6 months, C invested a lakh for a year, how long B invested his 1 lakh for? Okay, so I would urge people to attempt this question on their own. So let's attempt, let's say A b c and they're saying the profits are in the ratio of 3 is to 5 is to 12 okay a invested 50,000 for six months okay so because here is lakh so let me assume this is 0.5 lakh into six months and this is let's say here is k all right let's say this is how they have divided so here also we have let's say one lakh into sorry this is for c for c it is 1 lakh into 1 year okay and for b it is 1 lakh into okay this is what we have to find out correct so 0 0.5 into 6 this is let's say 3 something right uh, this is something we don't know let's say the t we have to calculate and this is something as 1 into oh sorry this was 12 1 into 12 okay so this is 12 something so 3 is 2 now they are saying this is 3 is to 5 is to 12 that means here is 1 that means this will be 5 months isn't it right this is oral all right 
let's move to the next question okay so now from partnership uh, we move to the concept of comparing ratios now this is particularly helpful for data interpretation questions where you have to compare certain ratios now uh, before we really go to this question i like to give you some concept right if let's say we have a number like 4 upon 5 comma 6 by 5 comma 11 by 5 can we compare these numbers yes so when the denominator is same whichever numerator is the biggest is really the biggest number right so this is easy to find out now the problem comes when the numerator and the denominator are different that means this is n1 d1 this is n2 by d2 so or this is n3 by d3 now this becomes tricky so in this case so for example let me take a simple example let's say you have 3 by 5 comma 4 by 6 now the question is how can you compare these two fractions so one way to compare this is you can always take the LCM and then when you take the LCM you basically what you're trying to do is you're trying to equate the denominators right we learned the concept in ratio in the previous video that anything you multiply to the denominator and numerator the ratio value doesn't change that means if i have to equate these two numbers i'll say 5 into 6 so if i multiply 6 here i have to multiply 6 here as well if i multiply 5 here to equate this to this i have to multiply 5 here as well that means now the number becomes 18 upon 30 and the second one becomes 20 upon 30 now again we have got it to the same format that means denominator same whichever is the bigger is the biggest number so this is one way to do it the other method and which we will use for this question type is when the numerator or denominator in such a way that the difference the difference between numerator and denominator right is constant if this is constant you can orally do these questions that means if you see the constant here is between 13 and 12 how much is the difference 2 here how much is the difference 15 minus 13 2 so everywhere the difference is 2 so in this case when the constant difference is between the numerator and denominator and when your numerator is greater than denominator so what happens the smallest numerator the smallest numerator is the greatest number so in this case what will happen 11 by 9 is your greatest number if you do a different scenario let's say if you say where n is less than d in that case what happens the opposite is true that means the greatest number is actually the greatest numerator is actually your greatest ratio so this is a simple concept that i wanted to explain to all of you so there are two methods in this that we learned one is you can equate the denominators you can do this cross multiplications and equate the ratios so that taking the lcm the denominators are same then there is simple comparison the second when method is when the difference is constant and you know that numerator is greater than denominator in that case what will happen the smallest numerator will be the greatest num ratio or the number uh, whereas the uh, when the numerator is less than uh, denominator the greatest numerator is the greatest ratio you can always do these questions also by the concept of simple concept of decimals right i have learned only problem is that we don't want to get into that calculation otherwise this is a very very simple method convert every ratio into decimal and then it's a very very simple comparison all right so let's move to a few problems now in the exam you will see this one type of problem very often wherein they say there are some coins 50 pesa coin 25 pesa coins 1 rupee and then there this is the ratio and tell us what is the amount and so on and so forth so in this question they have said suzy has three has one rupee coins okay 50 pesa coins okay 25 pesa coins okay she has three types of coins the number of coins with her are in the ratio 5 is to 6 is to 8 so let's say suzy have these number of coins and in the ratio of 5 is to 6 is to 8 but this is not that she has 5 1 rupee coins it could be 5k but the same is true here as well the same is true here as well right so this is the number of coins that Susie has right and here I will write this is 1 rupee this is 
50 paisa and this is 25 paisa okay if the total num total amount with her is 210 okay the total amount is 210 so now if you have to see the amount that she has right so how will it translate into amount so 5k into 1 rupee so let's imagine this is 5 uh, so whatever your k is constant right so the value would be how much your value would be 5k into 1 so this is let's say 5k itself 6k into 50 paisa 50 paisa is nothing but 0.5 rupee that means 6 into 0.5 would be 3k okay and this would be 8k into 25 paisa is one fourth of a rupee right that means this will be 2k now that means the total value from here will come as 5k plus 3k plus 2k that means 10k is 210 k is 21 that means if k is 21 this is 50 paisa coin so how many she has 6 into 21 126 now this is one way to do it you can all, also approach this question on the uh, through the options so for example if somebody says 5 into 6 into 8 and the total amount is 210 what you can always do is you can say if let's say if I go by options and they're saying number of 50 paisa coins are so let's say 121 let's imagine 120 is the correct answer right let's say hypothetically so if 120 is the answer that means 5 is to 6 is to 8 we are saying this is 120 that means the ratio the value of k is nothing but 20 if k is 20 that means here it would be 100 so 100 into 1 this would be 100 120 into 0.5 this would be 160 right and uh, that means 20 into 8 160 this would be 160 160 into 0.5 this would be uh, 40 so this should be your 60 i'm sorry right so 100 plus 60 plus 40 so this actually comes to 200 but they are saying total amount with her is 210 that means what this means that this is not the correct option now this is not the correct option but this is close right if i make it 160 it will be too high and 105 is too less that means the correct option is 126 isn't it right so this is another way to do it let's approach our last question and in this it says the cost of diamond varies directly with the square of its weight okay that means the cost of diamond is directly proportional to the square of its weight okay all right so now they say once the diamond broke into two pieces with weights in the ratio 3 is to 4 okay okay so cd now once what happens is let's say this becomes w1 and w2 so obviously it would be square plus isn't it right whatever k is the factor right so when the pieces are sold the merchant got rupees 2400 less okay so let's imagine in the initial case right so was 3 plus 4 so that means this would be how much 7 let's say 7k 7k square right or this would be cost would have been initially 49k square now what has happened is broke into 3 is to 4 that means this would be 3k square plus 4k square so this is how much 9k square plus 16k square equals to 25k square so what they are saying the difference which is your 49k square minus 25k square equals to how much 2400 is 20 this would be how much actually 24k square right when the pieces were sold the merchant got rupees 2400 less so imagine in this case right how much would it be actually right so your 24k square right this would be how much this would be 2400 right so k equals to 10 isn't it right that means initially what would have happened the same thing would have happened so what could have been the total amount initially 49 k square k is 10 so 4900 this is your correct answer so what did we do we said the cost is proportional to the square of the weight so initially let's say it was 7k square which is 49k square once you broke it then you got uh, 25k square and the difference right is 2400 right this is what was given so k value we calculated and that's your answer so 
these were a few questions on ratio proportion and the basic concept of comparing of ratios and uh, partnership. So thank you for watching this video.